We did see man uh, a little, not not that much, but here and there. And basically, what we came to when we we're when we we're looking at beating man and game plan versus man is, uh, you know, finding the best matchup, not always the best route. All right, not always the best route or not always the best concept, but your your best matchup. You know, how can you get uh, the kids you're confident in on some of, some of the weaker defenders on their side? All right, and we were able to do that by moving guys to create best matchups, trying to get wide receivers on linebackers. I think a lot of times teams can get set in their ways, you know, a lot of the time we take our stud receiver and he's our number one always to the field. He's our number one always to the boundary. Because that's where the number one wide receivers play, they play on the outside. Let's take him and put him at number three. All right? And the defense don't adjust, they don't bring their corner in and take their linebacker out, now you got your number one on the linebacker. Alright, so don't be afraid to move your guys around and put them in a slot. Okay, or take your slot, now you put them out into the number one. Again, you just got to move the pieces to find your best matchup. As we did here, here on the top of the screen, those are probably our, you know, predominantly our two outside receivers. Okay, usually plays number one, they're number one to the field, number one to the boundary. Well, what we did is we put them on the same side. That's the first time we put them on the same side in a two by two. And what it did is it got our slot receiver there on a backer who's off a little more. And all we're going to do is run a simple out route with him. All right, 12 yards. And all it did was we just moved, moved the piece around and put him in a different position and got him on a linebacker that was soft. screens this year, but we knew when we faced this team and we were getting man all day, too high man all day, we knew we had to get to our screen game. Right? I think a lot of times, basically what they got is that, that middle backer, the only one in the box, is manned up on the running back. When you're passing all day, he kind of forgets about the running back because the running back's only been fitting up and helping with pass protection. So what, what, what we wanted to do is get to a screen. Again, we do, sometimes we just motion guys just to motion them. We knew we were running screen that way, away from the motion. There's a lot of room. We get the line, line out and run it. I got a running back to ball. The passing game. All right. So screen in itself isn't the best route concept, but it's our best matchup for that play. And you can see that linebacker kind of get lost in there, and now he's got a three on one to deal with. We're able to gain nice yards on a simple screen off on, on that man. <clears throat> Again, simple throws and catches. We were getting man here again too. We went to you know our, our seam, see if we could work them one on one. And what I told you about not necessarily best routes or, or matchups is the kid at the bottom of our screens, our backup quarterback. <coughs> and he didn't play wide out that much. We needed him for this game, and it ended up being we felt that's where our best matchup was. Which happened to be our our backup quarterback on what was their probably about number three corner. We felt our kid was a better <coughs> athlete to beat him, so we went with. Him. Nice ball, and he makes a great catch. That's where we follow our best matchup was versus man. Again, here we want to go into a little bit. Here's this man team, and again, we're just trying to find our best matchups. And our quarterback, great job, he's a smart kid. All right, he scanned the defense, says, well, where's the soft spot? He found it. 
Again, the guy in the slot, who's going to throw it to down here to the boundary, or number two, is that backup quarterback again. Okay, primarily a defensive guy for us, played a little bit of wide out, not much. All right, we stuck him in there, but again, that's where our best matchup was. Soft, simple hitch. 11 yards. Okay. The offense gets fun when you're throwing quarterback to quarterback. Again, he's just finding the soft spot. That's his best matchup. Sticks it on there, 11 yards. As far as in-game adjustments, what we really love to do is, you know, we just kind of adjust our lineup. You know, where we where we moved our pieces around, we adjust our routes. And then sometimes, fellas, I think you just got to draw some up. All right, we kind of, sometimes we just drew things up. Like, hey, we never rep this. We don't have this in. We're going to run it. When we call, you're going to run it. And the kids like that. All right, it's kind of the backyard football that sometimes in-game adjustments we had to do. You just draw one up. All right. Again, there's really not complex to it. I don't think I'm an over smart football coach. We just try to keep things simple. Here you can see we stack. Uh, what, what this team did is it really blocked out that linebacker, take away our bubble. Again, like I told you, we like to get to bubble. So what we did, he was kind of giving us some fits. So all we did was stack our number three behind our number two to wide him away from that alley backer. Right, it's the only adjustment we made. So when I talk about adjusting alignment, that's all we did. We felt that gave us an advantage where that alley guy was no longer a factor. And we were able to get to the edge and run our bubble like we like. You see here we can stack. We didn't stack that much, all right, but this was a good in-game adjustment for us. See there, typically 24, number three receiver, where he would be, how that alley overhang linebacker would be a problem. So what we did was stack them to widen. <clears throat> we're able to get to the edge. Here, this in-game adjustment here. All right, we're going to hit the seam, and you're going to think the seam was called, but it was actually hitch. All right, we're trying to we're trying to work the hitch route here versus the soft corner, and we've been hitting that all game with our with our number twos. Kind of what I talked about earlier is trying to wrap that linebacker to open up open up the number one on the hitch. All right, our kids came back, and we kind of looked at it like, well, we're really not doing anything. Just keep running this wrap route. And we had already hit and seen earlier, when we call seam, we want to get to our number two. Then we just partnered them together. We said anytime we call seam or hitch, number ones are going to have the hitch, number twos are going to have the seam. So now we have both routes on in our concept. All right? Because if we just called hitch, that number two is completely out of it. All right? So what we did was we said, all right, instead of your wrap route, you hit a seam and the quarterback gets to pick. Obviously, you know which one you think you picked. We went to see it more times than even a couple times when they were supposed to when the hitch is open. All right, that's what I mean by a route adjustment. <coughs> Instead of a wrap route, we just had him on a seam. He goes to the top of the screen, I believe. There it is. You can see our number one, he just runs his hitch. Number two to the top of the screen would usually have a wrap because the hitch concept is on, but we adjusted it and told him we're going to run a seam, and our quarterback hits it. That was a route adjustment in that game. <coughs> there was another route adjustment, like I, like I said earlier about this man team. Uh, our number two there is one of our top receivers. Rudy is a number one. All right, plays opposite from the number one to the field right now. Again, this game we put him on the same side in two by two. We thought that's where we had our best matchup for, on that day. We've been running them on that out route I showed you earlier. All right, we don't have a jerk concept. But we said with all these out routes, we need to run a jerk concept. So he's just going to take one step to that out. We have two high safety, and we're going to split them. All right, that was kind of one just drawn up. We didn't even have that. 
Right? We didn't even install. We've never ran a jerk route up until this point in the season. I don't know, this game week six, week seven. Right? We've never ran jerk route. We drew one up on the sideline. Said when we go two by two and call jerk route, that's what you're going to have and we're going to hit it. Right? And it worked out for us. <coughs> that's one we just drew up. So the out, we called it a jerk route, took a step out, hit the seam, we found them. Okay? That was fun. That was fun when you can just draw one up sometimes like that and see how it works. If it doesn't work, don't run it again. Draw something out better. All right? We did hit this. It wasn't nearly as wide open. The kid really played it really well. Our quarterback just actually, you know, threw a rocket of a ball, but we hit this for a touchdown later in the game, two on the jerk belt. And we had success with it, so we went back to it. All right? It wasn't nearly as wide open. Our kid had, our kid had to make a really good play. He was able to do that. Here's, here's one, another adjustment we made. Again, uh, we didn't see a lot of man. This team gave us a lot of man, so we found ourselves making the most adjustments. Again, we want to run bubble as much as we can. Obviously, versus press man, bubble is not a good look. So what we did here is we're going to motion into bubble. Number one is going to run his guy off. Number two to the field, he's going to run a slant and crack the guy that's running in motion with our motion guy. All right, that was an adjustment we were able to make, so we were able to still run bubble. Do it. <laughs> and again, since they were playing man, we figured that the guy over number two was going to fall him thinking he ran a slant. So we took out two guys with running a slant and blocking the guy that's running in motion on this man, we were able to run bubble. We ran bubble like this, one play all year, and this is the play. That's the adjustment we made. That kid got up, he was fine, shook our kid's hand, kept playing. Uh, kind of takeaways in our passing game, again, we just want to create one-on-ones in space through high percentage strokes. All right, through high percentage strokes. Um, I think you want to grow, but you see our film, you don't need to throw the ball deep to have an explosive passing game. Right? We weren't chucking the ball deep this year. Um, got a game plan for success and be willing to adjust. All right? Even the best game plans need to be adjusted. And then uh, there's our passing stats for the year combined. 4,800 yards, 49 touchdowns. When I talk about point number two, you don't need to pass it deep. 40% of our completions was on a bubble, a hitch, or an out. And we had pretty good success running it. So I think we just try to keep things simple as we could through high percentage throws, and we were able to find success with that. Overall, we were able to go 92 this year with a conference championship, which hadn't been done in about 10 years. Uh, got to level two and ran into, a, ran into a tough team on a tough night. Uh, our season got in a little short. All right, but our, and our kids love playing in our system. They had a lot of fun. I think the no huddle helped us with that as well. Um, but that was that's how we ran it.